can sit wherever you want. Okay. And also, do you have masks? Yeah. 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 I think it was. Yeah. But I'm just asking if they have this. We have, we have some right now. We just ask that you put them on for the presentation today. Yeah, we do have the mess in the corner there. They had this old one too. She sent me a photo and she said, Are these morels? She found some morels. Hello. Hi. You here for the talk? Yes. We are asking guests to wear masks to the presentation. Did you have some in the corner? Oh, they want us to wear masks.
which I have to give credit to the museum here. I can't believe how well used your spider book is. <laughs> okay, could you pull it out of the shelf there and play the spider book? All right, it's an orange one. Okay. Look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Anyway, the idea of this one was recognizing local spiders. Okay. I taught middle school. Middle school kids fear about spiders. So do adults. We sensationalize spiders a great deal. We hear about all kinds of spiders from all over the world. But how often do we look at the ones right around our house? We don't hear about them at all. So I decided, okay, I'm going to write one. Right about it. So that's what this book is based on recognizing of the spider. Then one day, when I was driving down the road, I noticed a bunch of webs. Probably a lot of us have seen that. Okay? And I started to think, I know what those spiders are without even seeing the spider. So I decided to put together a book that recognizes the spider by recognizing the web. Many of you probably know somebody who can hear a bird and tell you immediately what it is without seeing it. Or maybe you know somebody who can see an animal track and they can tell you what it is immediately without seeing it. That's what we're doing with, with the webs. We look at the web and we can still tell what it is. The beauty of it is uh, there are a lot of people out there who don't like spiders but do like the webs. They are photogenic. Well, you're a photographer, do you agree? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're beautiful. All right. Anyway, all right. Another thing is I don't mean, sensationalized. We hear about them from all over the world. I have to point out in my pictures, with the, with the exception that some of them are going to be obvious, uh, I took all of them and I took all of them locally. These are local spiders. When I taught my seventh graders about local flora and fauna in a phenology based class, one of the most common questions I got when we were talking about critters was, does that live here? And the answer is yes. These are local things right here. Okay, and there are a few exceptions, but not very many. Okay, all right, I call the wondrous webs. They are absolutely remarkable. Okay, next. Quite focused if you could. Uh, web watching has become a hobby. I got an email from a guy who's writing an article for the New York Times about web watching. And he got a hold of my book. If you went to Amazon and looked up web watching, you would find this title. You probably wouldn't find too many others. And so he contacted me to ask me a few questions about web watching. It has become, yes, an actual hobby for most people. And I thought it was fabulous. Okay? All right, next. The web itself is a miracle. That's a quote from Dr. Dorian. Who's Dr. Dorian? Who's Dr. Dorian? Anybody know? We're all familiar with this book, aren't we? You nodded your head immediately. Yeah. You know the story really well. So much. Okay, anybody else know it really well? You know it really well? Who's Dr. Dorian? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a minor character. It's this. Fern is spending a lot of time with the animals. The parents get concerned. Let's take her. Let's go see the doctor about this. So they go see the psychiatrist. And that psychiatrist's name is Dr. Dorian. And they start discussing what was going on there with the pig and with the web, the spider web. And Dr. Dorian says, among other things, the web itself is a miracle. And after watching spider webs for years, I think I agree with that. They are beyond science fiction. And if you want to get the rest of the code, right there it is. Okay? Anyway, that book, people, people laugh at it. And they wonder, why do I talk about children's book like this? It is one of the few books that does such a pleasant job in talking about the spiders. E.B. White, the way it happened was he wrote a children's book. He wrote a Stuart Little in the 1940s. And he was looking for another book to write. And he was a pig farmer. And isn't this a neat combination? He was a pig farmer and he wrote for the New Yorker. Isn't that a cool combination? <laughs> anyway, anyway, he went out to his barn one day, and there, above one of the pigs was a big web. And said, Yes, I found my topic. But instead of writing it immediately, 
he decided to study spiders. He knew the right people. And in the 1940s, there was a nationally known expert on spiders called Willis Gersh. And he worked with Mr. Gersh, Dr. Gersh, for a year to learn more about spiders before he wrote a book. And there's a lot of really cool things in that book. And as I said, it has a pleasant view of spiders. Okay, next. Another example of the Wonders Web. One of the mistakes that people often make is they say, that picture is upside down. No, it's not. That's the way they typically hang. Okay, next. The word spider comes from spinder. It is so much a part of their life spinning these webs. Or arachne. Okay, next. Anatomy of the spider. Most people realize that a spider is not an insect. It has eight legs. Spider has six. It has two body parts. This is called the abdomen. This is called the uh, cephalothorax. All eight legs are attached to the cephalothorax. I used to take my seventh graders every year at Halloween time. People would hang up spider stuff. I used to go out there and find out how many of those are accurate. And it was incredible. Ten legs, three body parts, one body part, on and on like that. And in the comics, if you ever take a look at the way they show a spider picture in the comics, they almost always get it drawn wrong as well. Okay, anyway, next. Notice this is the way to hang upside down in the web. This is a, a common one in my neighborhood. So look at it carefully. If you just glance at it, you think about just four legs. But it holds those legs, these two especially, really close to each other. Okay, next. Here's the anatomy of the spider. We're going to concentrate on this. But for the, before we get to there, I'm going to talk about a couple things here. The number of eyes, right there, eight eyes. Almost always. There are exceptions, but almost always. Cholesterol. That's pronounced glycerin. Uh, they are what the fangs are. Yes, they do have fangs. Pedophile, this right here, if you can start looking at those and you can tell if it's a male or a female. My seventh graders got so good at it, they can see a spider walking across the floor and they yell out, it's a boy or it's a girl. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to look at this part right here, spinnerets. Okay, next. Some spiders, like this one, you can see the spinnerets from looking at it from above. That is not normal. This almost looks like it has tails. Normal. Next. There the, I'm sorry. This is the same one. You can see it looks like tails. Okay, next. This is more normal. You have to see the spider on the underside to see the, 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 the spinnerets. Okay, next. There's a closer view of the spinnerets. Here's one example of a photo I did not take. Okay. There's a closer view of the spinnerets. It looks like with the clump of them, there are three bears. There's almost no exceptions. And this is an interesting thing. Even spiders that don't make webs have spinnerets. Okay, next. Here's a different variety of spinnerets. Notice they're always in three pairs. Okay, next. And a closer look at what they are. Okay, next. This is a little micrograph that was done with a dye to, to allow the purple to show up. The purple is the actual thread that comes out of these greenish yellow things. Those are the spigots that are on the end of this. Spinnerets. Okay, next. Internal anatomy of a spider, which we don't see very often. Uh, it's an interesting thing. Yes, they have brain. Yes, they have eyes. They have right here ovary. Uh, you're going to hear me use the female pronoun quite often. It's because almost all the spiders that we see are female. The males are small and with a few exceptions, we just don't even see it. So they do that on this picture here, too. And then there's the heart and all that. But look, silk glands. And the silk glands lead to the spinnerets. Okay, next. Taking a closer look, notice there's a variety of silk glands. A typical spider has seven kinds of silk glands. Each one makes a unique silk. It makes it out of a liquid protein. That liquid protein, when needed, goes through these tubes. As soon as it comes out through the spinnerets, it becomes threads. You see it. Okay? This is a, an exaggeration, of course. It makes it look like there's nothing in the body except the silk glands. But what this picture is trying to show is that each of those silk glands has its own name, its 
and it has its own function. And I'm going to come back to that in a few minutes. Okay, next. These are the different names of the silk glands. They're named, these names that sound kind of strange to us, but it's named because of the shapes and so forth, not what they do. Okay, next. Fighters that hunt without making webs. Let's look at those first. Here's a jumping spider. They don't make webs. How many have seen these? Probably all have. Yeah, they are one of the few spiders that likes to be out in the daylight. And they do their hunting in the daytime. Events, <laughs> A-M-E, which stands for anterior medial eyes. Very good eyes. And they hunt in the daytime. They come out and they pounce on their prey. My seventh graders always thought this was a cool picture because it looked like I took a picture in the air. It wasn't. <laughs> it was on clear plastic. Ooh. Okay, I'll let them go ahead and make that. <laughs> okay, if you look carefully, you can see their fangs. Right there. Okay, next. This is the top view of a jumping spider. Jumping spiders are pretty amazing. Animals that jump usually have very big back legs. Look at that. It doesn't. Their method of jumping is different. It's almost like a giant heartbeat that causes them to jump. Okay, next. Wolf spider, another one that does not make webs. They have very large PME, which means posterior medial eyes, these back here. Usually active at night, there are exceptions. In my garden right now, I've been seeing a lot of wolf spiders. They run around at this time, and they are quite active. People exaggerate wolf spiders. Watch what I'm going to do here. Most people are surprised to hear that. You see, the, you see my fingers, how close they are to each other? That is about the size of a very large wolf spider in Minnesota. A typical wolf spider in Minnesota is even smaller. They are exaggerated a great deal. And they're, of course, harmless. Okay, next. This is one that was photographed out of the grass. A little bit hard to see. You want to see wolf spiders, the best time is right after the snow melt because they stay active <coughs> under the snow all winter. Therefore, we can see it. Okay, next. Fishing spider. I was expecting, I took a walk before I came here today. I, I, I took a walk around places here. I was expecting to see this spider. It's probably out there, but I haven't seen it yet. Runs across the surface of the spider. <laughs> Runs across the surface of the water. They do not make webs for catching food. They make webs for something else. And they spread out their wings. They're able to walk across the surface of the water. Uh, one of the uh, biggest spiders we have in Minnesota or Wisconsin. I have had people come to me and say, you know, I took a trip up in the boundary waters and I saw a spider up there as big as my hand. Well, we can't exaggerate sizes, but I think one of the reasons we exaggerate sizes is because they spread out their legs. A really big, no weenies, what this is, a really big one could be that big. Okay, next. There's another goal of eating. This is along the shore. They're also called uh, dock spiders. Is it called? Yep. Climb up the top side of docks and buildings and so forth. I used to teach a uh, spider class in an area of northeast Wisconsin. Anybody know where Eagle River is? Mm -hmm. Northeast Wisconsin. I used to teach a spider class there. And uh, when we would go out to look for the spider, the Nicolay National Forest is right nearby. There is a recreation area there that's mostly used in the summertime for biking. And there's a parking lot there. And in the parking lot, there's an outhouse. And every time we wanted to see this spider go to that outhouse, year after year, it never let us down. They're always there. They climb up the side of the building and they're looking for their prey. And of course, outhouses, yes, do attract lots of insects. Okay, next. Then there are these that sit in flowers. They don't make worse. Crash. You'll notice the daisy, they frequently are in daisies. Okay, next. And there's one that's in the daisy, but it's a little bit different color. Okay, next. And then there are a few others that don't make webs, they just run after their prey. Uh, Parson spider, I tend to see more indoors than anywhere. Okay, next. And then this one is a, what's called an ant mimic. Looks kind of like ant. Mm -hmm. Now, we can tell right away. That ain't no ant. <laughs> Ants don't have big legs. But, what 
if the spider runs around with its front two legs up like this, and then runs around with six legs. Yeah, could be confused. Okay, next. All right, let's talk about those that make legs. There are four basic types. Cobweb, number one. Next. This, this, is, this is the one we probably see the most. Does this remind you of a room at the windowsill, heating duct, corners, places like that? Yeah, they're very common, but indoors. <clears throat> there are some members of this group that make the cobwebs I have never seen outdoors. They're almost always indoors. Okay, next. Here is one spider that does this. Parasita toga is around buildings. Uh, some people say it's the most common spider in the world. Okay, next. And another one, nor Northern Steatoga. Okay, next. And then there's this one. Uh, one of those states that's made in movies very often with spiders is that they show spiders in a group. How many of us have seen, uh, was it the Harry Potter? There's one scene there where there's a whole big bunch of spiders. And then there's a, uh, Indiana Jones, the first one, that <laughs> showed bunch of spiders on this guy's back. Spiders are extreme loners. They don't do that. Okay? As close as a social spider we get is this one. Because she, if you look carefully, she will tolerate babies in her web for a while. But no, spiders are antisocial. Next. How about this one? I've never seen this outburst. Always in buildings. And they hang upside down and they go out of bed. We had one that came into our bathroom last year. I didn't know how I got there, but I was so glad it was there. If you go up and disturb this spider, it wiggles its body real fast up there, and it looks like a blur. I call this spider the cellar spider, but before my book came out, they were frequently called Daddy Long Legs. Spiders. Now, does somebody see a problem with that? A daddy long legs is not a spider. So therefore, it gets very confusing. So I prefer to call them cellar spiders. And they make an irregular, irregular cobweb. Okay, next. And then there are these. I walk along the road on a regular basis, and if there's a dew or a mist or a fog, frequently these little webs will show up along the side. Okay, next. Sheet webs, next. You've got shrubs in your yard? You've probably got these. Sheet webs. Fascinating web. Back, back then, back one, please. There is a spider right there that made that web. Okay, closer view. Next. There it is. Hmm. Upside down. Okay, next. Sometimes they show up in really big numbers in uh, swamps. I was walking on your boardwalk here a little while ago. And I saw right there among the leather leaf plants a bunch of these sheet webs. Very common in swamps. Okay, next. Here's another example. These are all kind of sheet webs that are out in a swamp. Okay, next. Sometimes they're, when they're in the woods, they're the other direction. They're at home. I see these every day when I walk through my woods. Okay, next. There's a slider that makes it. Okay, next. Sometimes they're flat like this. Next. Like this, a hammock. And there's a spider. Next, here's a spider that makes them. And then watch this next picture. Next, that is the male. And normally, I don't photograph that. But this was in the web. And she was so much smaller than the female. In fact, it's too big, kind of bounce right there. It tells you it's the male. OK, next. Funnel webs. OK, how many have seen these in your garden? Very common. OK, get a little dew, get a little fog. They show up. The fog funnel ones because the hole in the middle. Next. They look like this sometimes, the hole go over to the side. Next. And here is the spider that lives there. Often they sit in that hole and they run out to grab their prey. Notice you can see the spinneret some. Okay, next. This is one, this is kind of a funny story that, about this one. Uh, it was, I, I was walking down the hall at school. And uh, anybody here who was a teacher? Okay. One of the greatest things you can do when you see a group of kids together is to go right up there and mess up them. Why are they there? <laughs> well, there were a group of students who had congregated at this one spot. And I was walking down the hall. There's got to be something going on there. <laughs> so I went up and what they had done. They had adopted this spider as their pet, and they were feeding it. And so, yeah, it's interesting that they were feeding it a beetle because spiders, spiders don't eat beetles at all. Okay, next. Look at that. Those are all funnel webs. My neighbor mows his fields only once a year. And I went out afterwards, and those are all funnel webs. Okay, next. All funnel 
about a dozen webs here along the side of the road. This is kind of a dangerous thing to do, but I did it one time while biking. I counted them as I biked a mile. And it was, it was something like 150 webs along the side of the road. Okay, next. They also will tend to get frost quicker than other webs because they're down close to the ground. Okay, next. Sometimes they're indoors, like this one. That's pigeon area. Next. This is one of the few indoors. This is uh, uh, still a problem with a spider, but you don't see you don't see the long spinnerets in this one. Okay, next. Let's go to the orbs. The most people think of webs, this is what we think of. The big circular orb webs. Photogenic. Get out in the morning. It's just starting now. Usually the best time to see these kind of webs is in August and September. But it's just starting now in July. I had a fabulous morning. I can't remember the fourth or the fifth of uh, July. But I went out the next morning, and there they were. New cover. Okay, next. There are lots of them. Next. They are made up of different parts. The spider has these lines right toward the center, called radius radii, because I taught seventh graders, and seventh graders are more familiar with biking than they are with these other words. We always call these folks. Okay? Then there are those that go in this fashion right here. They are called the spiral, and they're, yes, they're often sticky. The center part is called the hub. There's an open space around the hub. And then there is all this framework around the outside of it. Okay, more complicated than you might think. Okay, next. Here are the different threads that are used. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this a couple more times because this absolutely amazes me. But every one of the glands that makes silk has a different kind of silk. And it's used in some different area. Okay, not all are for web building. Some are for coating a web, <laughs> coating an egg sac, and some are for wrapping up spray. But for the most part, they're used for the webs. Okay, next. All right, we're going to make a web here. The simple line, ambulate major, is the kind of silk that's used to make the first thread. How many of us have seen a web that stretches from about here to that wall? How many of us have seen that? I was on one of my trails two years ago, three years ago, and I found one. I couldn't believe it. How could that thread go? I went back and got a tape measure. Twelve feet. How could it have done that? Well, that's the kind of thread that's used. Okay, next. That's the first thread that's laid down. 
Then they drop down in front of it. They go back and forth on it a few times to make it stronger. Then they drop down to make that part of the way. Okay, next. And then they continue the frame. Notice all of this is done by the silk from that one gland. Okay, next. As well as these, all the radii. So far, I've shown you four pictures, they're all using the same silk. Okay? If it stopped right there, the web's not going to do anything. Okay, next. Now they step in to make it stronger. This is what's called an auxiliary, or often called temporary spiral, where they start in the middle and they go out and connect it like that. Okay, next. Uh, go back a step, please. I, I like these pictures, but I think they miss a step in between. This is temporary. It doesn't stay there. Next picture, please. It's all gone in this picture. This is the permanent one. It's made by a different kind of silk, and it's made by starting on the outside and going toward the center. Okay? Notice three kinds of silk. From that gland, that gland, and that gland. And they all are used for different goods. Throw in a few more things. She doesn't even see it. She pulls the threads out of her spinneret with the hind legs. She doesn't see it happening. This picture is a little inaccurate. They don't take the thread all the way to the center very often. They do occasionally, but not very often. Next, please. This is more realistic, where you see an open space right there in between. The reason for that open space is, remember, the webs are usually vertical. If she's on this side, and an insect gets to this side, she has to quickly go through to the other side. Okay, and notice it is usually vertical. I'll show you some exceptions. Okay, next. This is a closer look. What you're looking at here is really a, it's a remarkable picture because you're seeing the product of no less than four kinds of silk. Number one, there's a silk that goes toward the center on the spokes. Okay. Number two, there's a silk that goes on this spiral. Number three, and I'm going to show this a little later better, the little tiny dots you see there, those are little packets of glue. That comes from a different kind of silk. And you notice every place where they meet, it is attached. That attachment is still another kind of silk. Closer view. There you see it. Oak, spiral, this is called aggregate, it's kind of a glue, and then the attachment sites. Next time you see one of these webs, go up to it, put your finger on the spoke, it won't stick. Put your finger on the spiral, and it will stick. You know, after studying webs, I came up with a response to a three letter word. Wow. <laughs> I found myself saying that again and again and again. These critters are beyond science fiction. She does all this without even seeing it. Frequently I'm asked, how long did it take for a spider web to be made at you? Most books will say a half hour. I don't believe that. I think it's a little bit longer than that, more like 45 minutes, but still it's very fast. Okay, next. These are the different kinds of silk that are used and what they're used for. Each one has its own thing. They're all a protein base, but they're chemically different from each other. Okay, next. Here it shows it again what they're doing. This is the aggregate. Those are the packets of glue that I was mentioning. And then, of course, it has to be detached at different places, and that's what that is. But notice these wax, too, are for things besides making webs. Okay, next. Okay, let's take a closer look at the order. What do you see in the middle? A hub. You also see the space around it. This is what's called a closed hub. Okay, next. See, the closed hub. The threads go all the way to the middle. Next. This is, has a hub. Here. Next, please. It's open. Open up. 
This is one of the things I use to tell different kinds of spiders what they are. Okay, next. Sometimes in the center, in the middle, you'll see that big thing. How many have seen this? I don't think you'll see it along the gun line. Where did you see it? Uh, Australia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you really yeah. had to see, what to say was, it was out of here. Yes, and that too. Yeah. Where did you see it? Big ones this big. 
this one, an adult will make an argument about that baby. Again, text. Ah, summer morning out in the field. Look at that. Okay, next. Now look at these. You'll notice these look differently. A closer view, next. There you go. It's got something in the middle, in the hub. Next. And if you've got really good eyes, you will see, yes, she's sitting in that hub. One of the interesting things about the art webs that I told it would do is I'm not so sure the spider likes it. Because almost always, there's no spider present. This one was an exception. She kept sitting there, even though there was dew coming in the web. Okay, next. Here's a closer view. Large orb. Incidentally, a lot of people pronounce it argeo. The accepted pronunciation is argeo. Okay, next. Another view of it. Notice the zigzag. Next. And the underside. Next. Okay, this is a couple of pictures showing next to each other. Uh, this one is from above, and this one shows the zigzag and the closed hub. Remember, I took all these photos locally. Okay, next. There's a big one that's got the yellow on it. So that is the yellow garden spider, golden garden spider, or golden argiope. Okay, next. Very large spider. Okay, totally, despite what people say, it's totally harmless. Yes, how big? How big? Ah, you bring up a good thing. Uh, before my book came out, Sizes of spiders were always from there to there. Okay? What's wrong with that? I'm going to show that again for those who couldn't see. There we go. What's wrong with that? You're not burning legs. He's not showing the legs. So, what I did in my book is I listed this size and then I listed this size. Look. Alright, so put the two together. The body of this spider. It's usually about a little over an inch. Yes, it is. It's a big spider. And then you add to it maybe twice that. For an adult. Adult. Keep in mind, it's got to be an adult. Spiders grow throughout the summer. I have noticed the hotter the summer, the bigger the spiders. There's more food, more insects. Okay. However, right, we do tend to exaggerate sizes of spiders. Okay, next time. Here's another one that likes the dew. This one did not leave. Okay, next. And there's an interesting body with all these spines sticking out. Okay, next. All right, now let's go to the swamp. Part of my walk that I take virtually every day is to go by a swamp. The swamp is east of the road. I'm walking it in the morning. The sunrise is beyond to the east. You want to get really good views of spiders, spider webs. You get them dew covered and you look towards the rising sun. And this is what I do on this swamp. And look at this next. And you see lots and lots. <laughs> I was at that swamp less than a week ago. And I stopped at one spot and without moving, I estimated I could see 200 orb webs. <laughs> they would probably be there even if there was no dew. But the dew allows them, us to see them. Okay, next. And sometimes these orb webs are horizontal. That's what's cool about the ones in the swamp. They're often horizontal. Okay, next. There's a spider in a horizontal web. Okay, next. How many of us have seen this spider? Well, think about this. Have you ever been in a canoe and been paddling along the side of a lake? And you get into some of the brush and some of the plants that stick up and they bump against it and then you look down on the base of the canoe and there's these long skinny spiders moving. How many of that can happen? I had a friend who was doing wild racing and he says to me afterwards, he says, we looked down on the bottom of the canoe and the rice was moving. And then we went and take a close look. Oh, those are skinny spiders. And right away I said, oh yeah, you bumped into the webs of the tender and I said, they're very common spiders. Okay, as recently as yesterday, I watched one of these making a horizontal web. Okay, next. Here's a skinny, long, skinny body. They're often called stilt spiders because of that. Next. 
And we'll just say when, and yes, there, next, they have an open hub. Okay, next, there's a spider on next to it. I have learned if I, I find this spider and I don't, I find this web and I don't see the spider, I have learned to take a look at the plants along the side, and that's where they often hide. Okay, next, there's another example of Tetra and Napa and the goldenrod. Okay, next, there's one, a uh, cousin of it called Papia, Papia Napa, that only makes webs as an immature. When they reach it all, they stop making webs. This is beginner's luck. I took this picture maybe 10 years ago. I didn't think of it at all. All at once, after consulting with some spider people, I found out that is a very unusual picture. It's a picture of a young one in his web. That said, they don't even make webs as an adults. Okay, next. This is what the spider looks like. And yeah, I get to go back on snow. Okay, next, please. This is the swamp again because there's other webs in that swamp. Okay, next. There's this one. I know these. One of the most common spiders we have. If you start seeing spiders early in the season, as early as April, it's almost always this one. Okay? Many of them over winter. There's the red right here, called the pearl spider and the cross spider. Okay, next. There's the other side of it. Next. And here's one that has a, oh, it's still sitting in the web, even though the web is partially broken. Okay, next. But they make, they make a hiding place. This is a pretty good picture of the web. But to me, it represents a big loser. <laughs> loser. Are we familiar with the movie in this one? What? Why do I call it a big loser? No one's Very good. It doesn't have any bugs. You know, if you set up your business and you expect somebody to come along and you make nice, great <laughs> sums of stuff out there, and at the end of the day, it still looks great, all sorts of stuff out there, that's been a disappointing day. Well, this one makes a little hiding place to sit in along the side. I'll say more about those later. They're called retreats. Okay, next. Right here. Okay, next. Let's go to the woods. Walking in the woods is a little bit harder to see the webs. But I have learned, again, walk towards the rising sun. Never look at the sun. Look below the sun as you're walking toward the east, and you can see the webs. This is one. Next, there's this web right there. Now, trick question. It's not a trick question. Somewhere on that picture is the spider. Who's got superb eyes and can see it? It is there. It really is there. What color is it? It's the same color as the twigs. Um, wow. What? That is a spider. Now, next picture, please. There she is. She is sitting there. She's holding onto the thread. Let's go back and do that again. She's there. Next. There. I love this spider. <laughs> it's sometimes called the gray pump spider. Okay? But to me, it represents a really great way to live. Stay at home and let food come to you. And stay like this one. Just sitting there with his foot out there to feel the food. Okay, next. There she is right there. Okay, next. Yeah, two days ago. I was sitting in my backyard on my deck in the morning. The sun was coming up in the east, and I looked in the woods, and I thought, that's it. I see that web. That's a spider should call it Pangora. There's a little rule about spider webs or webs. It goes like this. The more spokes there is, the smaller the spider. Conversely, the fewer spokes, the bigger spider. I sat there and looked at it two days ago. I counted the spokes from where I was sitting. I counted between 40 and 45. That is a lot. The spider is very small. Usually, she sits right there. I think she is there, but that doesn't show up very clearly. Very tiny spider. Okay, next picture, please. There she is right there. Next. 
This picture shows how tiny it is. That's my finger in the background, and no, that's not me. That's an adult. Very hardy spider. I have seen these spiders with their webs out in the woods in October. Okay, next. And then there's this one, Cyclosa. Cyclosa breaks the rules by taking its spirals all the way to the center. Okay, next. This is known as a trash line spider because they bring in all sorts of debris to lay it in the middle. And of course, then it's a little harder to see the spider. Okay, next. And here's the spider again. Okay, next. Then there are some really weird ones that have strange bodies, but these also live in the woods. This one, next. This one, star body spider, next. And then this one, this, this is called the arrow spider. I was getting a program, some of you may have had a series like this, I was getting a program in, in, uh, in Eau Claire, and a uh, nature center just outside of Eau Claire. And the way I like to do spider programs is I like to have them in the evening. And we talk about the spiders indoor, and then we go take a walk. Because a lot of them make their webs in the evening. And we go out and we love to watch them make webs. So we were walking around until about 9 o'clock. Everybody is getting antsy, ready to leave. But one last place I'm going to look, and that is their big outdoor air conditioned unit. I looked in there, and there was one of these spiders. <laughs> the only one I saw in that whole presentation. Okay, next. How do you tell different kinds of spiders? Well, you, you can see them in the web. That's the best way to tell. Time of the year, the location, the size of the spider, the number of radii or spokes, as I mentioned before. If it's a vertical web or a horizontal web, open or closed, hubs, and then if there's a, a unique web, there are some really strange webs out there, but I'm sticking with the common one now. Okay, next. These are the orbs. Next. This is a few more pictures of orbs. Next. There. Now, remember the rule? The bigger the spider, the fewer the spokes. This one has maybe at most 15 to 20 spokes. They can step from one to another, therefore they don't need to have the spokes real close together. They run around on their own spokes, and that's why they do not get caught in their own. Okay, next. Here's another example of Larenoides. Looks in good shape. But next, we didn't do anything. Same way as this. This is a big loser. Next, please. <laughs> this is what it should look like. It's broken up. All right, next. Or this one. Somebody came by. Okay, next. Or this one. It's very much ripped apart. That one is active night right there. Okay, next. All right, let's talk about the insects. The whole idea is to catch bugs. Yes, and it works. Because the insect is caught in the stickiness of the spiral. Okay, next. Here's a wasp and a fly. They both get caught in this stickiness, and they hang there, usually, usually dying of exhaustion. If, if it is not yet dead, if the, hunger, the spider is hungry, it will come up and give it a little jab with its fangs. Okay, next. Dragonflies. Dragonflies are interesting. They are predators, but here's a predator we can find on. Okay, next, and another one. And next, and still another one. An emerald, okay. And here's one where the spider is starting to feed on it. Spiders are weird. <laughs> they don't chew up food. They suck out the insects. I used to tell my students that a spider eats every meal just like we eat the shake. They suck out the insides. They inject with their fangs, they inject liquids that is both a venom and a digestive enzyme that would take the inside of the insect and turn it into liquid. And then they suck it out. Okay, next. And that's what this one is doing right here with the wasp. Okay, next. And another one. Look, this is a moth. Okay, next. And here it's wrapping it. Often, if they don't eat it right away, they will wrap it. Okay, next. And that's, remember, that's still another kind of silk. Next. And this is a previous. They, they put up a big fight in the but it's getting wrapped up anyway. Okay, next. And here's another one being wrapped up. Look at that picture real carefully. Notice how the thread wraps up the thread completely. Okay. All right, now, next. 
This one demands a story. A few years, well, years go by so fast, so I'll say a few years ago anyway. A few years ago, some of you in my backyard web watching. There's a nice big shamrock spider web there, and I was sitting there watching it. And one of these insects, a bald face on it, hit the web and got stuck. Okay? The spider realized it would be too dangerous to go out and attack it right away. So the spider sat back and waited until the hornet got exhausted. And then it ran out and wrapped it up completely. End of the story, right? Mother Nature is full of surprises. You ever take a good look at their hornets? They have big jaws. What did that hornet do? It chewed its way out of the web and flew away. Oh, I would not have been more surprised if it would have pulled the scissors out of it. <laughs>
taken on a September morning. I can see it coming. The forecast is for saying the temperature is supposed to get down into the 20s. Well, usually spiders don't even make plants at that time. So what I had to do is I had to find a web that was abandoned from previously and then go visit it on that morning. And yes, there's the frost. Okay, next. There's another view of the frost on the web. Mm -hmm. And another one. Oh, the hardest. What do they call it? The, 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 the uh, grail of spider photography. Okay, next. But once I found one, I started to find a few more of them. Okay, next. And next. This one shows the frost really good on the nearby golden rod. Okay, next. And more. Next. I took this photo just last September. Nice chilly morning, I walked around in a field. I only found a few webs, but I did find this one covered in front. I had done it. The holy grail of spider photography. I was excited. Really cool, huh? And then somebody came along, the next picture was, and took it. <laughs> Okay, next. 
Here's another one right there. Next. And they sometimes they roll up leaves and then hide in them. They're called retreats. Okay, next. And then this one's the one on the clothesline. Okay, next. Blade of grass can be, or sorry, a clump of grass can be a retreat. Okay, next. And another one. Next. Or they make their own retreats, like this one does. Okay, next. And then this one, this is kind of cool. They make a retreat. I'm not sure which one is the green tree. I think that one is. But then there's all these other webs nearby. Okay, next. Sometimes they make what I call a hiding place. This is a crab spider that just wrapped itself up in the leaf. Next. And then sometimes the jumping spiders make what I call sleeping bags. <laughs> okay, next. And then there's the nursery web. Wow. Middle of July. Best time to see this. We are approaching middle of July. Last week, I found four of them in two days. Here's what goes on. This spider right here, which is a kind of fishing spider, makes an egg sac and puts it in here somewhere. Then she puts this webbing all around it. And then she sits back and guards it. Okay, next. I found mine on a milkweed, and it was just like this. The leaves were folded over, and she was sitting there guarding it. Okay, next. Sometimes they just bend, bend over a blade of grass, and she guards it. Next. Sometimes it's guarding, and look, the babies are starting to hatch. Okay, next. These are all nursery web spiders. This one is not going to be there much longer because the babies are getting to be a pretty good size. Okay, next. There she is again, sorry. Okay, be on the lookout for them. Milkweeds and raspberries tend to be the places where they happen the most. Next. Then there's a sack spider. Okay, and here's a lot for you. Try this. Take a cloth. Try to be a pretty strong cloth. But fold the cloth this way, and then fold it back up this way. So that you have a three-sided figure. One, two, three on the back side. OK? And then put yourself in the middle. That's what this spider does. It takes a single blade of grass, pulls it over this way, pulls it back up again, and does it with itself in the middle. Wow. It lays eggs. She stands there and guards it. You, you probably have it right here around your, around your lake. I started looking for them about four days ago, and just that cast along the lake, I was walking back on two of them. Here's one. Here's another view. Next picture, please. Here's another view of the same thing, folding that blade of grass over. Okay, next. This is the spider that does it. It is known as a sack spider. Okay, next. Here's an, uh, an example of a crab spider that bent over a, a leaf of milkweed and with its egg sac inside. Okay, next. Sometimes they guard their egg sac. Next. That's what this one's doing, guarding an egg sac. The egg sac is bigger than she is, but she's guarding it. Okay, next. And sometimes they have the egg sac in the web with them. Okay, next. Sometimes they leave it hanging from a thread at the egg sac. Okay, next. And sometimes they carry it. How many of us have seen this wolf spider running around carrying your eggs out? Yeah. Usually, uh, well, it can happen right now, but uh, usually earlier in the summer. Because what happens after a while is the eggs hatch and then they climb onto her body. Okay, next. Here it shows it again. Okay, next. And again. Then there is the nursery web spider, which carries her eggs under her body. Okay, next. And then there is the cellar spider that carries her eggs attached to her mouth. Her closer. Okay, next. Sometimes we leave the egg sacs alone. Okay, next. Like that's what this is. Just left alone on a plant. Okay, next. Have to hatch on their own. Next. Next, please. And here, I, this picture was taken in January. We were out trying to find spiders in, uh, in January. And we pulled back the bark of a tree, and there was an uh, egg sac right here. Okay, next. Those are babies just starting to hatch. Next. And there are more. Next, please. 
In the world of spiders, when they hatch, they're little tiny spiders, they survive on, at first, the yolk sac in their body. Then they start getting bigger, and they start spreading out. Now, I said a little while ago, spiders are extreme loners. You see what could happen? They will start attacking each other. Highly animalistic. Okay, they'll start looking at their brothers and sisters in a little bit different way. So, how do you survive when things are tough around home? How do you survive? Okay, next. You disperse. Okay, next. They'll climb up on a twig, as this one did. Baby spiders, incidentally, are called spider wings. Okay, next. Lift up the abdomen, pull out some of the threads, and let the threads, next please, carry you away. This used to be referred to as ballooning. I prefer to call it kiting. You still have that book? Okay. You know the story real well. What happens to Charlotte if we get to Ardea? What happens to Charlotte? Two words. She dies. She dies. I have given talks, I have given talks at state parks and such, where I've had parents come to me afterwards and says, you know, I read that story to my child, and I still cry when Charlotte dies. Why did he be white? Have to die. Remember, I said about E.B. White, he studied spiders. And what did he learn about that kind of spider? They lay eggs and fall, and then they die. There's nothing you can do to eat them. Okay? Well, the eggs survive the winter, the babies come out, and what do they do the following spring? they do the following spring? Yes. They balloon or they drift away? You know the story really well. I did in second grade. How many did not drift away? Good, three. That was an easy, that's an easy question. Yeah. What were their names? Oh, <laughs> Joy, Nell, and Arania. How many of us probably know somebody named Joel? <laughs> and Joel, uh, Joy, or maybe Nell. How many of us know somebody named Arania? Why did you pick those three names? I don't know why the Joy and Nell, but I can tell you the Arania. Because that's the Latin word for spider. Okay. Anyway, they drift off. Next picture goes on. And we will see scenes like this, where they're just kind of reaching out into the air. Okay, next. Reaching out of here, what they're really doing is, of course, attaching to the threads. They throw this thread out, next please. They throw the thread out and then they go on it. And once again, spiders, they, they, they know how to live. Isn't that the efficient way of, of traveling? You, how many of us have flown a kite? Did you ever have a case where a kite carried you away? <laughs> Wouldn't it be, look at that, it doesn't cost any money. Highly energy efficient. Okay. All right. Well, that's what the Okay. All right. Next, please. There you see it drifting in the air. All right. We don't see this very often. Next, please. What we usually see is this. Because the threads, after they get carried away, the threads get stuck in the plants. Okay, next. And you might see a scene like this the next day. Have you, had, have you ever had an experience like that? You look outside in the morning. Usually in autumn, and you see threads all over the place. I had a uh, talk I was giving where a farmer came up to me after the talk. He said, he's had mornings where you go out and you look at his field, and it's, it looked like every blade of wheat out there had a thread attached to it. That just means the spider babies have been active. Uh, next picture, please. I, I wish I had said I took this picture, and I didn't take it. But uh, there have been recent studies Another wow. There have been recent studies about how to get that thread out of their body. And the recent studies say that what they are doing is if the ground they're standing on is a positive electric, let's just say positive electric, and the air is negative, that that will repulse enough to lift them away. So they're using electrical 
Armed Force to travel. And one thing I haven't mentioned yet about the web. It's coming up. Next, please. Trend line. Once again, how many of us have seen this? When spiders walk, they lay down the thread. And if you bump them, they won't fall all the way to the floor. This is kind of comparable to using a safety rule. Next, please. And sometimes we'll see scenes like this where we'll see the thread that was laid down from previous. Spiders use webs for catching poop and for a number of other things. But they also, yes, do their courtship on the web. Okay, next. Spiders invented courtship on the web. Okay. <laughs> we, don't, we don't see this very often. But here is a female. Here is a man. Notice the size difference. I was walking past my barn one summer day, and I took a look at this web, which I was looking at every day. Oh my gosh! So I ran back and got my camera, and I took a few photos. He is coming in to court with, and hopefully, to mate with her. Now he's got a few problems. Number one, she's bigger. Number two, She's almost lying. Number three, she's probably hungry. <laughs> and number four, he's trespassing on her <laughs> Now, isn't that enough to say, I'll forget it and be a bachelor? <laughs> it, it seems like that. But he's got one little trick. He starts to pluck the threads at a rhythm that is different from that of prey on the web. Okay. This has been said the invention of good vibrations. <laughs> <laughs> and, next picture please, for spiders to successfully mate, he has to take his pedipal, which you can just barely see right here, and he's got to put it into her opening there called the aquifer. Okay. All right, he's got to do that not once, but twice, because he has two pedipalps. They're both filled with semen. This is another wasp, but the spiders have a very weird way of being. Okay? And look at that. Size difference. Look how exposed he is if she decides to go back. And next picture, please. This is the actual moment of, not yet conception, but the actual moment of, of mating. His, his pedophile is in her gonorrhea. And uh, this is a very unusual thing. See, I have known seasoned naturalists, 20 years or more naturalists, who have never seen it. Now, if I have a lot of spiders out there, why don't we ever see it? Because it usually happens at night. Okay, next, please. What a strange way to end the talk. And then, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. One more wow. Look at this next one. Frequently, much of the web is still present the day after being made. She will eat the web and recycle most of the protein into a new web. Wow. Mm -hmm. Another wow. Some researchers claim that 70% of it will be recycled. I was teaching a class at the Eagle River, as I mentioned before, and I said this to the group, I said, okay, we're going to go out at dusk. We're going to go out, and we're going to find 100 active webs. Definition of an active web, the spider is in the web, or the spider is making the web. And I got this response from the group, something like, oh, like it's impossible. We went out, we quit counting at 500. One of the places we went was a dock sitting out in the lake. Beautiful summer night. We just all sat around that dock and chatted. There were bullfrogs calling. It was just a spectacular night. There were webs all around the dock. Next morning, by 6 o'clock, all those webs were gone. Now, things that knock down webs can be wind or prey and so forth. But with this particular spider, she ate them. What's the advantage of eating your own web? Besides food. Nobody knows. Oh, and you're there. It's a great way to hide from predators. Okay. And finally, one last quote from E.B. White. 
Once you begin watching spiders, you have time for much else. The world is really loaded. <laughs> okay. Do green paper. One more, and I'll be glad to answer questions. Like, uh, I'm gonna get out of this hot room or something like that. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Uh, average lifespan. Average life, very good question. Uh, Ed White had Charlotte die within a year. That is probably the typical lifespan. If you go from egg in the spring, many spiders overwinter as eggs until the following spring. You have a whole generation. That is a big challenge. There are some people who say they really can live a couple of years, but your period is not very long. Okay, question? Well, I was just thinking about the intelligence. You know, you always wonder about animals' intelligence, yeah. and you know, you think about the size of a brain and That's a spider. That's correct. What have they done as far as have they done any neuro? I mean, if you could say, oh yes, oh yes. Studies? There are there are people who do studies on just that. And what are they learning? They're learning that the, the spider is sort of programmed. You might say it evolved into methods of growth and use of the web that work. Nobody else does stuff. How many animals are there that make their own snares to catch prey? There are many, but not very many. How many of them have that many seven kinds of silk? they can bring out to use and not even see themselves doing it. It's a type of evolution that's a little bit beyond most of us. During the 1960s, and I guess it would be expected from the 1960s, they say you could remember the 1960s. You, you weren't there. there. <laughs> <laughs> but in the 1960s, there were some researchers who fed LSD to spiders. Oh, that's just me. Yeah, they, made it, they just responded by making it really, really Oh, yeah. I think you can do research money in a better way. Okay, any, any, other, any other questions? How oh, can anybody say a bad word about spiders? Okay, yes, Larry, does, does Minnesota have the brown? Ah, you notice I never said a word about them the whole time. Or black girl. Why? Because they're not here. They're too cold. They're too cold. I'll put it this way. They are here, but they're not. Uh, Populating, re reproducting uh, populations. Okay? Most spider books, when they come out way up front, talk about the brown recluse and the black widow. I put any reference to it way in the back. It comes way back here. It comes with the territory. If you're going to talk about spiders, you should mention something about that. I think it's not, not very interesting in fact, spiders. Well, it looks like this. I had a lady call me up in Cloquet. Well, you know where Cloquet is, so it is. It's not in the South. Okay? <laughs> she, she called me up and she said, You want a live, live little spider? You know, you don't get, you don't get offers like that very often. So I said, Sure, I'd love to have that. Are you sure it's a live little spider? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is it? Well, it's in a boat. Where did the boat come from? We brought it up from Florida. Oh. That's how they get here. So I met a red berry queen, and yes, yes, it was a live little spider. But that's okay, I paid for her Dairy Queen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. And then Brown Recluse. Brown Recluse gets so blown out of proportion. Uh, you ever know somebody who, uh, or some kind of animal that just never wants to leave home, always stays in the same neighborhood? That's what Brown Recluse are. They're called Recluse for a reason. They hide. They do not go out very much. The nearest Brown Recluse to us is probably southern Wisconsin. Illinois. I just do not come this far north. When I have done uh, several programs in spiders on the radio, I tell them right up front, there's a few questions I won't answer, and that's one of them. I just won't answer. You start answering those, that's all the questions they'll ask. Right. They won't ask anything else. Right. So I just avoid it. So that is way exaggerated. I know I was at a conference one time when a woman was talking about, she went to the University of St. Louis, and uh, she was working for a master's degree. And uh, she needed a subject to work upon. So she started looking around the house and trying to see about these spiders. So I decided, well, I'm going to study them. She found out after 15 years of living there, raising a family, that they were grown with this. Oh, nothing ever happened. As I said, they're called recluse for a reason. Okay. Any, any other questions? I could be so hung up on that, and just a couple of them, I don't know, but that is a I say that's the price to pay for it. When this book here was being printed, I 
skip, I skip any reference to that. However, my publisher said, if you really want to sell this book, you're going to have to put in something about black and white. And so reluctantly I did. But that's the way people are. That's what they were looking for. Okay, any other, any other, any other questions? Yeah, books are for sale. And if anybody, they're $10. Everything back there is $10 a piece. Uh, if somebody wants one of these books and can't afford $10, I have them in the car and let you have them for $5. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it except one of the corners of the cover is meant. Not the life of an author. What's that? I said the life of an author. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You should know. Yes, it's better than that. Okay. All right. Any other, any other questions? Uh, if you don't want to buy these books here, they have them in the gift shop, don't they? <laughs> well, yes, yeah, some of them I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. All right. I hope that we all... Thank you.